We do know that it is against the law to fly a drone in a restricted area. Absolutely. It was an icy cold winter morning on November 3rd of 2022. Out of nowhere, two residences were simultaneously raided, one in Rachel, Nevada, and the other in Las Vegas. Doors were busted open at both locations, and 15 to 20 agents rushed into each of the homes. The residents were quickly located and a man was removed from the Rachel address. He claimed he was handcuffed and led outside in below freezing temperatures while clad in only a t-shirt and sweats. Approximately 100 miles away at the Las Vegas home, the man's girlfriend, Linda Hello, is said to have experienced the same situation. The woman was allegedly forced to exit the residence barefoot and dressed only in her undergarments. In the midst of the chaos, the man has claimed a variety of items were seized from the homes, including laptops, cell phones, backup drives, and camera gear. In addition, a drone was confiscated as well. You're likely wondering who these mysterious agents were, storming houses in those early morning hours. It was a joint venture, actually. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations working in conjunction with the FBI to carry out the covert operations. Serious business, no doubt about it. The potential reason behind the raids, however, was murky. Until now, as you'll soon see. A statement provided by a spokesman for Nellis Air Force Base located in Las Vegas cited an open and ongoing investigation and declined to provide further information pertaining to the basis for the investigation. The man behind the raids happens to be Jorg Arnu, the longtime operator of a tiny website called Dreamland Resort. Jorg's site focuses on none other than the infamous Area 51, and he also happens to live right on the border of Area 51 in a tiny town called Rachel, Nevada. Though the raids proved to be big news, an intriguing encounter that Jorg has never mentioned publicly occurred approximately six months prior. This event somehow didn't make its way into the media, and he somehow failed to ever mention it. We've obtained exclusive footage that has never been seen before, and it reveals details of a specific event that likely led to the carefully executed raids. It all started on a sunny late May afternoon in 2022. A deputy had been dispatched to the Nevada Test and Training Range, also known as Area 51. How are we doing, sir? Good, how are you doing? Good. We got a report that people are flying drones. Not us. In this area? Not us. We have the drone with us, but we haven't launched it yet today. Okay. We do know that it is against the law to fly a drone in a restricted area. Absolutely. Okay, do you, do you have a map of where, because this right here, even though you're not on the boundary, the airspace goes way out here. Yeah, I do know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, we're not planning on flying the drone here. We'll just do some filming. And we're actually doing one more shot and then we're out of here. Okay. Okay, do, do, do you have your ID and anything? I do. Okay. However, the information received by dispatch from a representative of the base wasn't consistent with Jorg's assertion. Yeah, it also was reported that the drone went up and actually went into across the boundary. The drone? Yeah, the I, drone. I promise you that was not us. That wasn't. No. Was anybody out here? There was two tourists that came out, but none of them had drones. None of them had drones. But it seems there was a perfectly convenient explanation. There was a white plastic bag. Oh, you saw a plastic bag that might have blown over across the boundary. It appears as though the man in the green shirt gives a quick partial shrug here. When only one shoulder goes up, this can indicate that the person isn't as confident in their answer as they should be. For this reason, it can be a possible indicator of deception. That might have been what okay. they saw, but I can oh, promise okay. you. I mean, yeah, you no, no. can look, look at the logs of my drone. We oh. did not fly today. Okay. We were planning on doing some flying in Rachel, but not here, oh. right? It's interesting that although Jorg offered that the detective could look at the log, he then quickly continued talking without waiting for the officer to respond. This could have been an attempt to look honest, while also making it less likely that the officer would take him up on his offer. It seems like all of this could have been cleared up right away by just looking at the drone log. Oh, okay. I, I actually live in part-time in Rachel. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought so, I recognized you. Yeah, yeah. Hence the raid that would come later at the Rachel residence. The deputy reviews the limitations when it comes to conduct near the restricted area. As long as you're, you're, you're going by the rules, man, yeah. that, that's all. I've, you know. I've, 
but six, there is that 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 Lincoln County code that has that that you can't fly the drone up above in a pro you know what I'm saying that yeah. it's not just the boundary the airspace goes so many miles up in the air that that direction from the boundary and York provides the deputy with some reassurance the closest we're going to fly is in Rachel okay they got to do some okay. some uh, flying in Rachel do some aerial shots okay and, uh, and I okay. I don't want any trouble and I, I told them we are not flying at the gate okay Okay. Yeah, just have him just drive right up here, and I'll go talk to these guys and make sure we're good, and then we'll go on our way. Okay. Okay, yeah, let me just um, have that back. Now that I know, because this is your vehicle, right? Correct, yes. It yeah, I came back to your vehicle. So I have you. I just need to get their information, and then we'll go from there. Okay. No okay. Problem. Yeah, Thank no you problem. very much for cooperation. Thank you. The officer approaches the facility to speak with staff. A little over 10 minutes later, the officer emerges from the base. They're still adamant that a drone went over and flew over, okay? I, I wasn't here, I don't know. I promise okay. you it was, it was not us, and it was probably that plastic bag. I didn't see it, but they all saw the plastic bag. However, it's difficult to imagine that the flight of a plastic bag could closely resemble that of a drone, so much so that it could be mistaken for one. I don't know what it is, but just, I mean, you know, that's all you got on your shirt, man. It's a restricted area. Very true. Take a closer look at your shirt. So all I ask is, when you come out here, just just understand where, where you're where you're at. I mean, it says right there, photography is prohibited. It says all that right there. The deputy begins to collect some information relating to the identities of the men and their reason for being in the area. So are you guys you guys from Florida or is that a rental or Germany? Germany huh? Notice how both men are holding their water bottles in front of their torso. They may be using it as a barrier between them and the officer in order to reduce some of their discomfort. However, this doesn't necessarily mean they're lying. Even someone who is telling the truth may feel nervous when they're confronted by a police officer. However, if they are guilty of flying the drone, then it would certainly make sense why they're feeling stressed now. Yeah, they're doing a, a production for a German documentary. York appears to feel more at ease and confident. If he is lying about the drone use, he may be more of an accomplished liar compared to the other two. Sure. Thanks, sir. We are planning on going out to the uh, front gate tomorrow. We are not going to fly a drone. Just to let you know, okay. we are going to be respectful of boundary and of security and all that. Uh, if I were you, I wouldn't even take the drone. The deputy's advice not to bring the drone is well-founded, though it may not be enforceable. Mere possession of an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, under these circumstances is not illegal. On the other hand, it's unclear what the enforcement relationship is between base security and the local sheriff. Given base security statements and party statements, there is an inconsistency as to whether or not a drone even flew that day. The deputy takes down the name and address of each individual and learns that most of whom are residents of Berlin, Germany, with the exception of Jorg. Will you write your address down right there for me? Yeah. After the deputy has gathered all of the necessary information relating to the identities of the individuals, he shares with them some words of wisdom. This is what's known as field counseling. His advice is just that, advice. Like I said, just be yeah. careful. I mean, like I said, if I'm in Germany and Berlin, I'm going to be very respectful of your bases, your military, stuff like that. So that's all I ask, and I would not bring that. Okay, because if it does fly and go over, and and they come out and they uh, improve it, then they're, they're going to take it. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. Okay. All right, are you guys done here? Are you going to be around more? Well, actually, we, are just, we just have one shot very far. That's, that's it. Okay. Of me driving up to the gate and then go out if you're going back to race. Okay, so can you get that done in the next little bit? Yeah, yes, we yes. will. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to pull over here. I got to do some things. Hurry up, get it done. And if you can, you don't have to. But, but just tomorrow, and make sure. I, I would not, like I said, I can't tell you what necessarily to do, but I would not bring that tomorrow. Yeah. Just, no, just, no. just because. We talked about that we're actually going to leave it in one car by the highway and then take one car down. Yeah, yeah. Don't give. You know, like I said, I'm not saying you guys are lying. The officer has stated, like I said, which is a referral statement four times in around a minute. When someone is asked a question and uses a referral statement. It can be a possible indicator of deception, as they may be trying to make their statement sound more credible. 
However, the officer is not answering questions, but rather just making statements. It's possible that he's trying to be convincing. Well, all right, thank you guys, appreciate it. It seems that the following day's filming was completed without further incident. However, during the course of the six months that followed, York was on the radar of both the FBI and Air Force Office of Special Investigations. The investigation is still ongoing. Though York has never been formally charged, he claims damages to his homes as a result of the raids total approximately $5,000. In addition, he claims his loss of seized equipment is projected to be somewhere around $20,000. However, this amount seems to randomly change through statements he's given to multiple sources. As of this video, he has raised $15,000 for the supposed damage to his home and lost equipment. It's unknown why he never told various sources about the Area 51 drone incident or ever mentioned it publicly. It makes you wonder why exactly York would leave this detail out of his numerous media interviews, where he promotes his GoFundMe for the damage caused by the so-called unjustified raids and false accusations, especially when he's mentioned the agents were specifically asking him about his drone. However, York recently published a copy of the search and seizure warrant, which included the reasons for the raid. The main reason outlined was using an aircraft to take photography of a military installation. The warrant also listed items to be seized during the raid, including records and information relating to any military installations, military operations, national defense information, and classified or unclassified programs in the United States, as well as any digital devices which contained evidence of those offenses, and any evidence of who used, owned, or controlled the device, which collected the information about military operations. The warrant also specified the seizure of anything which contained evidence of the times the device, likely the drone, was used. The warrant also outlined that if York, as the person who had items seized, wanted any of the information taken to be returned to him, it would be copied and given back but only if the information didn't include any records or documents relating to military operations.